Hey guys, hello from sunny London. Those are two words that you very rarely hear in the same sentence. Um, just before I show this video, I really wanted to do a really quick intro to it. Um, I'm trying a new format where I will be interviewing uh, various people um, about certain food memories that they have and have them try recreate those dishes. So um, in this video, my friend is actually interviewing me off cam, so that's who I'm talking to. So don't get weirded out. If, um, if it looks like I'm talking to someone else. It's just because we're trying a new format, we're experimenting with it, um, and let me know if you like it or not. So, back to the studio. Today we're making an oats arroz caldo, uh, but a vegetarian version. An arroz caldo, if you grew up in the Philippines, or if you don't know what it is because you are from abroad, <laughs> uh, is basically a rice porridge or a rice congee uh, with some chicken, some ginger, and some garlic, something that we eat a lot when we're sick. And it's absolutely delicious. But sometimes you want a substitute for the rice, so you put some oats. Oats make a lot of sense in this recipe. And other times, you actually want uh, a substitute for the chicken, simply because you just don't feel like eating animals or meat at that point of the day. So you just do a vegetarian version. We're using a vegetable bouillon cube for the broth that's already quite delicious and quite salty, so a lot of the savoriness will be coming from there. All right, I'm gonna start first by getting rid of all the little details and by chopping up kind of all those little elements that we'd be putting on top of our oats caldo. Chopping up some garlic both to fry with the oats and in the same time to just get them nice and crispy and they're gonna act as toppings for the dish. So the ones that I'll just get nice and crispy will be just nice circles, and the ones I'll fry, I'm actually mincing. I'm gonna do the same thing with just half a red onion, just a really kind of nice rough chop. Then do the same thing with my lemongrass, and I'll make sure to really cut it thinly so I don't get really raw pieces of lemongrass. And then finally, just a little bit of ginger. With this, a little is gonna go a really long way. And then finally, one little shallot, just for that extra acidity on top. They did this in Lotus, and I really appreciated it. I'm gonna do this in different steps. I'm gonna start off first by cooking down some of my mushrooms. So olive oil goes into the pan. These pans are so cool, they're actually from Massflex. I'm super lucky that I was able to build this kitchen with lots of partners who kind of sent me a lot of stuff, and Massflex supported me with a bunch of pots and pans. I'm super happy. So during the whole time that I'm doing these videos, I'll make sure to always mention in the description box where the items come from if you guys are very interested in purchasing some. Get the oil slightly hot, and I'm gonna throw in some of my oyster mushrooms to kind of brown them up nicely. I wanna get them nice and crispy, but still toothy, so it feels like those are pieces of meat. Season that with a tad bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper. So, I've tried this dish before in a, in a resort in Chargao called Lotus, and they used tempeh. Tempeh was also really delicious, but I think oyster mushrooms for me will really kind of just put the whole dish together. Those are done, beautiful and brown. Transfer them to the bowl here. Second thing I'm gonna do with this pan, very simple again, olive oil. I'll be generous with it, about two tablespoons or two lugs. I'm gonna throw in my thinly cut garlic chips and we're gonna brown them a little bit. That's gonna infuse that oil with so much flavor, and at the same time, just give us nice little pieces of delightful pillowy textures of garlic. One thing I always say, do not be afraid of garlic and onions. Two staples in the Filipino diet and in most Filipino recipes, and I could not be happier about that. Once we've got the color that we got, about two minutes after, super simple, transfer the garlic and some of the oil into another pan here. That's gonna keep cooking on a side. I actually went vegan for two months last year and it was really tough to kind of just get used to eating just vegetables in the beginning. And then I realized it's all about building layers of flavor and texture. Once you have something interesting in your mouth, then the dish becomes interesting. Then you don't necessarily look for anything anymore. So it's really important with this oats arroscaldo is we're gonna build this flavor and we're gonna make sure we have lots of different layers. So we're gonna do that by using some garlic, and some ginger, just fried in some oil to just really bring out all those aromatics and cook down the oats with that. And now comes the fun part, we just bring everything together in one pan. So I'm gonna throw in first my lemongrass and my ginger. I'm gonna use some of that garlic oil to add that in there. 
Those two things together in a pan with oil smell so beautifully. Then goes in the red onions. I'm really looking just to kind of get them nice and tender. And then finally, more garlic. Once everything's come together quite beautifully, we're gonna cook this exactly as you would a risotto, except it's gonna take 10 times less time because these oats will cook down really quickly. I'm using quick cooking rolled oats. You can use regular rolled oats if you want, or um, steel cut oats would work as well. We're gonna start by just putting a little bit in the pan, just enough for one person. And that's gonna release a lot of starch. So when you add the broth in there, everything's gonna thicken really nicely. Mix first the oats with every aromatic that we have in there, and then take that broth, but before doing the broth, I was about to tell you a really important tip, but I was about to forget to do it myself. Make sure to taste it, just to make sure how much salt is actually in that bouillon clube first. All right, it has, it has a lot of pepper already, so I'm not gonna be adding any more pepper. We're finishing off with some lemongrass, some basil, to give us a nice kind of like Asian character. To make you feel like you actually have chunks of meat in there, we're gonna put some oyster mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms, when I went vegan last year, was one of the biggest things and one of my best discoveries because if you cook it down enough and it gets nice and crispy, it does, it feels oily. It feels like it could be pork or could be meat. I'm just gonna cook all that together. It should take about five minutes, really quick. While that's bubbling away, I'm gonna finish off the last ingredients that we're just gonna put right on top. So I got a nice scallion over here, which we're just gonna thinly chop. And then I've got some beautiful leaves of basil here. Our oats are almost finished. We just gotta wait for it to get slightly thicker. I'm gonna cut up two little calamansis just to give us that citrus and that freshness. So everything's pretty much done. We're gonna go ahead and transfer it to a bowl. Oh, that smells so good. I'm then gonna take my oyster mushrooms, put them right on top there. I love that flavor. My garlic chips. You can also sprinkle some of the oil that's still in there. Basil spring onions, and then my shallots. Finally, two little calamansis. And that is probably one of the simplest dishes you'll ever do, and it looks pretty, it's super hearty, and it's extremely nutritious. We're gonna take some beauty shots first, and then we'll eat it. At the end of the day, all I'm looking for is a big coagulated brothy soup that's coagulated because of the oats in there that release all that starch. And then with some, some red onions for some acidity and some calamansi for some citrus, some freshness, and just something that when you eat it, you don't look for anything else. And this is the type of dish that is extremely healthy, extremely good for you. And I'm super honest here, it's something that I could eat every day, every morning. Yum, that's so good. I actually only need like a tiny sprinkle. That's already quite delicious. But this is actually, when I was thinking about it, it's not vegetarian, it's fully vegan. Um, no animal products in here. And when you taste it, when you try it at home, you'll realize one, it takes 15 minutes to make, two, it's extremely filling, and three, it's just the type of flavors that make you happy, especially if you grew up in this country. All these flavors coming together really just put a smile on my face. And if you try it at home, I really hope that it puts a smile on yours. Really appreciate you guys coming by, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I really hope you enjoy that video and you try out this recipe. And if you do, please send it to me on Instagram. I'm over there under at Erwan, or you can send it to me on Facebook, Erwan Youssef. Um, and just make sure to, to hashtag back in inside so I'll see all the pictures that come up. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace out.